welcome to chapter 5, less 1. We're going to be skipping chapter 4. We'll come back to chapter 4 after Christmas break. But up until Christmas break, we're going to be talking chapter 5. It's five lessons long, and we're going to knock it out pretty quick, starting with lesson 1. Lesson 1 is solving inequalities by doing addition or subtraction. So, I can statements. I can solve linear inequalities by adding. So, your job is to say, can I do this? If you can do this, you're on the right path. I can solve linear equalities by subtracting. If you can do this, you're on the right path. If you can't do this, come to tutoring and I'll help you out after school. So, our standards today, algebra, um, reasonings, expressions, and inequality standard number three, algebra, um, CED standard one, and CED standard two, or three. Let's go ahead and start our first example. All right, in example one, we're gonna be solving C minus seven is greater than 65. So our directions say that we're gonna solve so we're going to solve this problem like we normally would solve a regular equation. We're going to check our solution, and we're going to graph that on a number line. So we're going to do three things. We're going to solve it, we're going to check it, and we're going to graph it on a number line. So let's go ahead and get to the part of solving. So what we're doing is still kind of like what we do on an equation. But this time, instead of an equal sign right here, we now have an inequality sign. So in this chapter, we're working with inequalities. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line through the inequality sign, which separates the left side from the right side of our problem. We're going to solve for the letter C. Well, if we want to get the letter C alone, we have to get rid of minus 7. And the opposite of minus 7 is plus 7. So we add 7 to one side, we add 7 to the other side. The 7s cancel out. C is greater than 65 plus 7. Well, 65 plus 7, that is 72. So our answer is C is greater than 72. So what that means is as long as I put a number bigger than 72 here, it's going to be bigger than 65. So let's say I put 77 here, because 77 is bigger than 72. 77 minus 7, that's 70. 70 is bigger than 65. Now, if I put 72 here, 72 minus 7 is 65. 65 is not bigger than 65, it's equal to it. So as long as this number is bigger than 72, the answer is going to be a true statement. But if this number was smaller than 72, the answer would be a false statement. So if I took like 67, 67 minus 7, that's 60. 60 is not bigger than 65. So again, we need numbers bigger than 72. We cannot be equal to 72. We have to be bigger than 72 to make a true statement. Now, the next part is graphing. So if we have to graph this, an easy way to make a graph, you don't want to make a graph that counts all the way up to 72. That's a big graph. So what we would do is I put the number that we're looking at in the middle, 72. I count 1, 2, 3 up. So this is 75. I count 1, 2, 3 down, that's 69. And so what we do is we look at the inequality sign, this symbol right here, and we decide do we use an open circle or a closed circle? Well, we use an open circle if it's greater than or less than. We use a closed circle if it's greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. So we use an open circle if it's greater than or less than. We use a closed circle if it's greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to. Well, since this is Greater than, we're going to put an open circle right here on 72. Now, we have to look at this arrow. Where is it pointing? Is it pointing at the number, or is it pointing at the letter? And in this case, the arrow is pointing at the number. Well, if our arrow points at the number, our line is going to go to the right. So what that means is anything this way on the graph will be an answer. So anything from 72 and above is our answer. So when we graph it, we're saying that's a solid arrow going that way. Anything below that is not a solution. So our solution is anything above this line. Let's go ahead and do another example. In example two, we have k minus four is less than 10. So our goal is to get the letter k by itself, kind of like an equation. Draw a line through our inequality sign because that's where we're gonna separate. And if we want to get k alone, we have to get rid of this minus 4. The opposite of minus 4, that's plus 4. So we add 4 to each side. This cancels out, and we get k is less than 10 plus 4. 
that's 14. So our answer is k is less than 14. Well, now that we have our answer, the next step is to graph it on a number line. So we make a number line. We put 14 in the middle. We count 1, 2, 3 up. That's 17. 1, 2, 3 down. That's 11. Look at the symbol. It's an open circle. So put an open circle on 14. And if we look at this, the arrow points at the letter. Letter begins with an L. Left begins with an L. So if it points at the letter, line goes left. Points at the number, line goes right. So that means anything to the left, since it points at the letter, is our answer. So we would shade a solid line saying that we're going to have our answer anywhere to the left of this line. And that's how we get our answer to this problem. As long as k is smaller than 14, whatever's on this side will be smaller than 10. All right, in example 3, we're going to be solving the inequality x plus 23 is less than 14. So our job is to get the variable x by itself. We draw a line through our inequality sign separating left from right. We look at the letter x, and we look at what's with it. We need to get rid of that because our job in algebra is always to get the variable by itself. So we ask ourselves, how do we get rid of a plus 23? In math, the answer is usually the opposite. So we're going to do the opposite of plus 23 and subtract 23. This cancels out. We get x is less than 14 minus 23. That's negative 9. So our answer is less than negative 9. If we had to graph this on a number line, we would graph it like this. We put negative 9 in the middle. We count 3 up. So this is negative 8, negative 7, negative 6. We also count 3 back. Negative 10, negative 11, negative 12. We look at the symbol and we decide is it an open circle or a closed circle. In this case, it's going to be an open circle, so we put an open circle on 9. And then we look at the arrow and we say, does it point at the letter or does it point at the number? And this arrow points at the letter. And since it points at the letter, that means anything this way is where our answer lies. Our answer is everything to the left of negative 9. In example 4, we have to solve for the variable m. m minus 4 is greater than or equal to negative 8. So this number can be equal to this whenever we solve the left side. Draw a line through our equal sign. We're going to get the letter m by itself. So we look at this and we say, how do we get rid of a minus 4? Well, to get rid of a minus 4, we add 4. So we add 4 to one side, add 4 to the other side. This cancels out, and we get m is greater than or equal to a negative 8 plus 4 is negative 4. Our m is greater than or equal to negative 4. So we draw a number line, put negative 4 in the middle, count 3 up, count 3 back, and then we look at the symbol here and we decide, is it an open circle or a closed circle? And in this case, it's a closed circle. So we put a closed circle on negative 4. Then we look at the, the arrow. Does it point at the number or does it point at the letter? If your arrow points at the number, line goes right. If your arrow points at the letter, line goes left. Well, in this case, it's pointing at the number. And since it's pointing at the number, that means that anything this way of that would be our answer. Our answer is everything to the right from this point. And that's our answer to this problem. In example five, we're looking at a problem that has a variable on the left side and a variable on the right side. And what we want to do is we want to move the variable from one side to the other side. Since I have a variable all by itself, when you have a variable all by itself, you want to move the other variable to that side. So we want to get rid of this 12n because it has something else with it. So since we have this variable by itself, we want to get rid of 12n because it has another thing with it. So to get rid of 12n, we're either going to add 12n or subtract 12n. And in this case, we're going to subtract 12n's. And if we subtract 12n's from one side, we have to subtract 12n's from the other side. Well, 12n's minus 12n's, that's no n's. We have negative 4 is less than or equal to 13n's minus 12n. 
That's 1n. So we solved that problem just like that. Now, if we had to graph this, we draw a number line, put negative 4 in the middle, count 3 up, so there's negative 1, count 3 back, there's negative 7. We decide is an open or a closed circle based on the symbol. Closed circle. Put a closed circle here. Then, now you got to decide, does it point at the number or does it point at the letter? So this points at the number, that means my line goes right. Anything to the right of this would be the answer. So anything going that way, that's where my answer lies. And that's it for example 5. So sometimes when we have variables on both sides, it's better to get rid of the variable and move it to the other side where there's nothing else, and then you can get your answer pretty quick. Let's do one more like this. So in this example, we have 3p minus 6 greater than or equal to 4p. Solving this, we do the same type of problem. Um, we draw a line through our equal sign, and we go ahead and we get rid of, since we have p on this side, p on this side, we want to get rid of the p that's on the left side, because we already have a p by itself. So we're going to add it or subtract it. Since this is positive 3p, we're going to go ahead and subtract 3p. And if we subtract 3p from one side, we subtract 3p from the other side. This cancels out. We get negative 6 is greater than or equal to 4p minus 3p is 1p. So we solve for 1p, make a number line, put negative 6 here, count 3 up. So this is negative 3, count 3 back. It's negative 9. We look at the symbol and we decide to open a closed circle. In this case, it's a closed circle, so we put a solid circle. And then we look at the arrow, and the arrow points at the letter, so that means that the line goes left. Letter, left, number, right. So anything this way is where our graph is going to be going. One more problem and we're done for a day. We're just going to look at a word problem and we're going to write an inequality, solve that inequality. Let's get going. You guys are doing awesome. For our word problem here, we have George wants to buy season passes to two theme parks. If one season pass costs $54.99 and George has only $100 to spend on both passes, the second pass must cost no more than um, what amount? So this word right here, no more than, actually means the inequality sign that we're going to be using. The word no more than means either less than or equal to. So George must spend less than or equal to a certain amount. So here's what we know. We know that one pass costs $54.99. Plus, we know he's buying another pass. Now, he can spend no more than, which means less than or equal to, because he's not allowed to spend more than this amount. He is allowed to spend less than the amount or equal to the amount. So he has to spend something that's less than or equal to his total. Well, his total is $100. So we know one pass costs $54.99, plus another pass, and he wants to spend under $100. So we want this amount to be less than or equal to $100 when added to $54.99. Now we could actually solve this and figure out what amount he could actually spend. So let's go ahead and solve this. So what we would do is we would subtract $54.99 from one side, subtract $54.99 from the other side. This is going to cancel out, and the amount that George can spend no more than for his second pass to a theme park would be $100 minus $54.99, which is $45.01. So as long as the second pass to the other theme park is less than $45.01, or more, one set, you can definitely buy that pass. But if that pass is more than $45 in one set, he can't buy that pass because he only has $100 to spend. So this is how we do this. We look for a word in the problem that tells us either less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, less than or greater than. And in this case, the word no more than means less than or equal to. So this is our symbol, and this is how we do this problem. You guys did an awesome day. That's it for today's lesson, and I will see you tomorrow.